Hey there YouTube, Logan with Hideaway Homestead coming to you today with a video on feeding animals without the feed store today and um, I'm going to start this video off saying what I normally do when I make these videos is I'm not saying not to go to the feed store I go to the feed store, I buy feed from the feed store and I give it to my animals so um, going to the feed store and especially getting good feed that's got good minerals in it will do nothing but help put fertility back into your soil and your garden wherever it is that you're using the manure and cycling it back into a system and helping a system to uh you know uh replenish itself and especially if you're doing like fodder and stuff like that i think that it's a great idea to get the rabbit pellets and feed the rabbits and then take that manure and put it around your trees etc etc so the only reason I make these videos is because I think it's really important to be as self-sufficient as you possibly can. And um, today I'm going to be talking about the chickens and ducks. So I do a lot of stuff on the rabbits. Rabbits are easy. They're herbivores, and so as long as you can just grow the right plants, um, you're golden with them. So with chickens and ducks and other game birds, species, and stuff like that, anything that's, you know, um, fowl, a lot of times it seems to be a little bit harder. Now, I've seen a lot of people try to grow um, grains, like they're, you know, trying to grow their own grains in their garden and they use that to feed their chickens. That is a lot of grain to grow and it's a lot of labor. Now, what I'm going to be doing today is I've got right here, I've got some liver, some heart and lung of rabbit. And so... Yeah. If you look at, oh, there's a Skoda keeping guard. If you look at like your game bird feed, your high protein, 30% protein, and you think, golly, are they getting that from soybeans? If you look on the back and you read the ingredients, one of the things in it is porcine products, which is um, pork, you know, pork byproducts. So you're feeding birds pork meat. And that's the thing is used to people... They didn't give their birds a whole lot of grain because grain was expensive. This is back, you know, 100 years ago. They would um, give a lot of their, you know, yard chickens uh, scraps, um, roadkill, <laughs> uh, or, you know, they go and shoot a varmint and feed it to the chickens. So what I'm going to be doing today is I'm going to cut this up and give it to the chickens. They've Their, their feeder just got empty, and so um, they're hungry. They're ready to eat. I just moved them. They're grazing on some grass, but that's not going to be enough to get the protein up. Like, uh, that's another thing is a lot of your birds, they're more insectivores, you know, carnivores than they are omnivores. I think that um, we get a little confused on that because really and truly only about 3% of living things on planet Earth are actually um, omnivores. Now, that data could be incorrect, but, you know, that's just a... Quick Google search, um, you can see how many, how many are, um, what percentage are omnivores, what percentage are herbivores, and what percentage are carnivores. I think it's like 60 something percent is um, a carnivore, and then 30 something percent is herbivore. And a lot of your herbivores are insects because they're so specialized at eating specific types of plants because plants don't have really any defense except for to poison you. And so, a lot of your herbivores have developed ways, um, ruminants, you know, they um, basically are, um, I've heard people call them uh, beer making factories and uh, they're just kind of, you know, making beer all day. That's kind of why they sit around and um, kind of lazy, <laughs> you know, I mean, that's a that, that's extremely unscientific description of that. But then like, you know, rabbits, they, they, they poop, but there's a certain poop that they poop the first time that they actually eat. And then that second one that comes out as the pellet is the finished product. So they, you know, pass everything through a couple of times. Um, but with like your birds and stuff, they're more carnivore. They're like little dinosaurs. And if you don't have a whole, whole lot of insects for them to eat, which a lot of people don't. I mean, they, they do get some insects in this little tractor. It's not very many. If they're out free range, they get a lot more. I've had hens that we literally fed nothing and they just ate the insects, but then you've got winter time. There's a lot of stuff to factor in on that. So if you've got a lot of greens and lower 
protein things that you can feed the birds that's great and then if you can just supplement it with the high high protein things that'll balance everything out i think we get a little too hung up on what percentages we need yes there's been a lot of scientific study done with that and feeds are made uh, specifically to meet the needs of the animal so um, i'm not trying to discredit any of that but a lot of our home stuff homestead stuff is not competing on a commercial level so uh today i'm just going to do a little bit of cutting this up i'm going to get the camera set up here where y'all can see some of the action maybe let's see here about right there so they've got an empty feeder right now so they're going to be real um keen to come over here and see what i'm doing but i'm just going to start cutting this liver and this lung and heart up and giving it to them in uh, pieces that they can um, they can eat so if you were going to do this the fast and efficient way you might could do it in a blender um, and just make a, a, a little slurry or uh, you know some other way some other faster way of chopping I just had this and was going to cut it up and give it to them I'm cutting it up into kind of small pieces not too small um, I mean, uh, the ducks can, you know, swallow pretty big pieces whole. There the chickens go. They're going. I was trying to cut a few so that way everybody got a chance to get some. As you can see, they're going a little wild here. Go ahead and cut this up some more. And they'll, um, the chickens will especially do a good job of helping pick some of it apart if, if the slices are too big. Um, now, once they get up grown, you don't have to worry about cutting it as much because they can pretty much do everything their sales um but yeah they'll uh, chickens will straight pick something apart uh if they kill it they're they're little carnivores and so um the thing to keep in mind though is i would not give any uh chicken to chicken or any duck to duck or probably any chicken to duck or duck to chicken just because you know can cannibalism is not good for anybody so um I focus on the, the meats that are of a different species. So like, for example, right now, you know, we're giving the rabbit, um, I'd give them pork or uh, any kind of beef byproducts. Let me dump all this in there and let them go wild. Oh, here, Skoda's gonna get in the way. Come on, Skoda, come here. Come here, girl, come here. People watch the, the ducks get the liver there. This is the first time they've ever had it. And you can see the duck. Uh, some of them are a little skeptical. When I first threw it in there, they knew it was going to be food. So they all jumped for it. But uh, they're kind of looking at it now. So when they, there's a piece of lung, maybe they'll like it better. Oh, yeah. Once they figure out what it is... really takes off up. Oh, I didn't cut that one up good enough. That's the problem there. Cut up this heart here a little bit. Real high protein, real good for the little birdies. Yeah, you could make this into a slurry and serve it up with some kind of greens or you know, whatever whatever you like. Got a little bit of fat here. Be good for them. Skoda has some rabbit over there, but she's not touching it right now. She must not be hungry. So I just want to come over here and bother the ducks and chickens while they're trying to eat. Ain't that right, Skoda? As you can see, they're, they're getting it figured out. Um, with the ducks, especially when they're little, I would be careful. I wouldn't give them too big of pieces because ducks can actually choke. Um, because they'll, I mean, they'll swallow stuff like, you know, big, big slugs, snakes, um, other types of little animals. So you want to be careful. Um, I wouldn't give them just like a whole liver or something like that, you know, then try to swallow it and end up getting choked. But you'd be amazed at the size pieces that they can eat. So we're going to give them this, let them get a little protein snack, and then... get them on uh let them 
graze a little bit more and then move them and then uh, fill up their feeder. Uh, normally, after your chickens and ducks have had a taste of meat, they, uh, they kind of crave it. Like for example, with these right here, they're still figure out oh, we got some fighting going on over there. They must've got a piece they really like. <laughs> but uh, you know, you can, you can grow a lot of insects like stuff like worms, uh, larva, and uh, really get their protein needs met. But it's also really good to have the option to every once in a while give them some meat because it'll definitely keep their protein needs met and you know the way I think about it is is we haven't really designed a human uh, chow you know we don't have a specific bag that you go and buy and it's like oh well everything you need is in this bag and so you just eat this these dry crumbles and uh, you'll be good um, I think we can trust our animals to know what it is that they need um, so like if you've got like if i've got this meat here and i'm giving it to them uh once they've had enough protein they're gonna have a biological response to hey you know what i'm full i don't want any more of this meat and they're gonna eat a little bit of greens or they're gonna eat a little bit of the feed that i give them and um you get that without really having to put in any kind of effort so i think just offering the variety and making sure that you're offering something like for example, I mean, there are certain things like animals need a certain amount of protein to be able to survive and grow and do all of that good stuff. So as long as you're supplying enough, they'll eat what they need. And um, the more you give them, the, the faster they'll grow. That's, that's just like with the fodder on the rabbits. Like I have to be careful with, um, mulberry giving it to grown rabbits like if you give them too much you know you can get them a little little fat and then they don't want to breed as well etc cetera, etc cetera. all right they've been cleaning up the pieces now there ain't nothing left i'm gonna cut some here and let it dump it all at one time so that way everybody who hadn't had something will get a chance and like i said we'll move the coop again here in just a little bit and give them a give them a full feeder as you can see, the coop's starting to get a little crowded now. Um, I've been moving it very frequently. Just uh, like a lot of times in the morning before I leave to go do a job, or if I'm you know here all day, I'll move it uh, once in the morning. I'll probably move it again in the afternoon and then right before they go to bed so that way they have a clean place to sleep. But unless you're gonna be moving them that often, I do not recommend having this many in a little pen like this unless you're going to do some kind of deep bedding and uh as you can see they uh they cleaned it all up i don't know if we can get down here and they've got the taste for meat now so i'll be able to start supplementing a lot of that and save on feed i mean that's one reason to do this is just to save on feed um if you're not a full-time farmer full-time homesteader or um you know you just like a little bit of ease and stuff you know you can go and trade the energy that you spent to earn those dollars and you know buy the feed a lot of feeds pretty cheap it's been going up a lot i've noticed but it's still uh, relatively cheap compared to what you get so being able to save on that some and especially to use something like um i'm not too fond of the rabbit um organs they're not that great to me and there's certain parts of the rabbit that are just not as tasty and so the fact that i can give that to the chickens and the dog and the ducks just helps to close that loop and let there you know be no waste um and as far as you know humans we're we're a, we're an apex predator we're the apex predator um, we may not be the strongest or the fastest um animals in the animal kingdom but we're definitely arguably the smartest just considering what all we do um, and we can pretty much come in and take over any area that we want uh, so just like a lion doesn't eat 
all of the animal, you know, it leaves behind. You get that's why you have a lion share. You know, you got the saying a lion share. A lion will eat a certain amount, it'll eat all the prime cuts, all the stuff that it wants, and it leaves the rest to the hyenas or whoever else. So this is a great way to be the lion, be a little more in touch with nature, take that excellent resource like the rabbit organs and give it to the chickens and the ducks. And uh, yeah, you know, um, I, I plan on making a lot more videos talking about this. This is one of my passions as far as homesteading goes is just seeing what all can be done to be more self-sufficient. And uh, yeah, if you if you liked the video, if you found uh, any value in it, you learned something today, please leave a like. If you got any questions or comments, drop those down below. And if you haven't subscribed to the channel already, go ahead and do so. I drop a video like this Monday through Friday, every day, uh, Monday through Friday. And uh, I appreciate all y'all watching and we'll see you in the next one.